All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Tech Tuesday. We want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to come and learn a little bit more about websites and how you can do some things on a budget and optimize your marketing and your presence. And if you have any questions, obviously feel free to save them, put them in the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. We want to thank Amy from Creative Allies for joining us this morning to share her knowledge and wisdom and expertise on all of these things. Amy, we'll let you tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce us, and help us learn a few tips and tricks on helping us with marketing today. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is my first time at the office, so I'm really excited to be here. And today I want to just talk about websites and some tips that, that I want to share to help you make some better decisions, hopefully, on your website. But my company, really quick, Creative Allies, we're a digital marketing firm. We are based in Raleigh. And we actually do a little bit of everything, but our primary um, goal is to help supplement marketing for businesses that don't have internal marketing teams. So our kind of target client is a small business where they're focused on doing what they do best, but they don't have an internal marketing person or team. And so a lot of times that falls on the CEO, it might fall on someone else to be able to do marketing. So folks like that, we love to be able to just carve out the marketing, let our team handle it. And then you're able to focus on what you do best and run your business. And so that's our target, but we do websites. We do social media, video, um, article writing, so copywriting, some of everything, like I said, um, and the goal is just to make your lives easier as a business owner. But today I'm going to talk to you about websites. And so give me just a moment. I'm gonna share my screen. We've been doing website development for about four years now. And that is the largest um, revenue driver for us. We do obviously other things, but that's the largest revenue driver for us. Okay, are you able to see? Okay, perfect. All right, so I want to start just by telling you a little story first. And there was about four or five years ago, a company that needed a new website. And I feel like this image is probably very familiar. I think everybody can relate to that being a small business owner where money is tight and making a decision to invest in certain areas can be a challenge. Marketing a lot of times gets put at the bottom of the list because you have other things to do with your, with your funds. And so we, um, let's see, about four years ago, we're switching from being mostly in the entertainment space and moving more towards a small business client. And at Creative Allies, we wanted to refresh our website. So we wanted to make sure that when small businesses came to the website, they didn't feel like, um, interestingly enough, we only had a couple of employees, but because of some of the people we worked with, people thought they couldn't afford us, which was the craziest thing to me. But we've had the opportunity to work with a lot of large brands, but people thought that meant that we were too expensive. So we wanted to redo the website to make sure people understood, know it's the small business audience that, that we want to target, and then make sure we had other things on the site that people could relate to. And so at the time, we did not offer websites. And so we got some referrals to different vendors, and we ended up spending $15,000 on design and development. We had two different vendors, one to do the design, one to do the development of the site. What we ended up with was an amazingly gorgeous website. I mean, it was definitely top notch from a design perspective. Um, but what we also ended up with was no visitors and no leads and an angry person in me <laughs> of what the heck. I just spent all this money that I really don't have because I thought I was making an investment in my business. And what I had was a pretty website that nobody knew about, nobody knew how to get to. And I had content that wasn't really relevant to my audience because I actually spent all my money on design and development. Zero time, effort, or money on the content and making sure that when people did come to the site, if they found it, that the content spoke to them, that we could drive people to the site and things like that. So today I'm actually gonna to talk to you about some mistakes that you can avoid. I consider myself an expert on these mistakes because we went through this, it was a painful process, but I've collected 10 mistakes that I think every business owner should understand and know about and avoid in order to either create a site for the first time or to refresh your website. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. And so what you should get out of this talk 
are four things. The first is why you need a website. Most businesses have one, but in case you don't, just really briefly on why you need a website and how that makes your business um, look a lot better. The second thing is the how to keep your website simple, but valuable. The third is ways to build a great website within a, within a budget. Um, a lot of times people think a great website means you have to spend a lot of money. You really don't. There are so many tools and so many ways that you can actually create a really nice website on a budget. And then the last thing is if you decide to use a vendor or a partner to help you with the website, what are some things that you should know in, in making that decision? So that's what I'm hoping you walk away with today. All right, we're gonna go through what I believe are the top mistakes that, that people make um, when thinking about their website. So the first one is that you don't need one. Um, about 25% of small business owners don't have a website. So that's not a huge number, it's not the majority, but it is a good amount of people. Um, a lot of times people think social media is a substitute for a website, but that's just not the case. You want to make sure that when people go online and they Google you, they don't just see your Facebook page or they don't just see your Instagram. That alone will not really make you look credible and it won't make you look like an established business. And so if you're an established business, you want people to go to a domain that has your business name in there. You don't need to be um, too crazy with it, all the bells and whistles, but just have that digital presence of a website. It makes you look more credible and much more professional. The other thing is that social media, you don't own that right? So the people that are following you, you don't own that information. Um, you can't necessarily control all of the content. People can go on your Facebook page, write whatever they want about you. If you catch it, you can delete it, but you don't have control over that. On your website, you have much more control over the content that's there. You don't have to have people commenting on it, but you control the message that you're sharing. Um, if Facebook goes down, your website's still up, right? So you don't have to worry about those things that could happen with social media. So it's just very important to recognize why you need a website and how important it is to your business. Imagine if someone just finds you, they don't know anything about you. Your website is that first impression that they'll have of you and you want to make sure that it's a great impression. The second mistake, this one may be the most important, and that's really understanding your audience. A lot of times people forget that the website is not about you. And sometimes that's not very intuitive because it's your website and it's your company, but it's really not about you. It's not for you. And it shouldn't be just like a sales pitch about how great you are and, and what you've done and who you've worked with. Your website should be for the visitor. It should be for the audience. So what are they looking for? What questions do they have? What do they need? to find out about, and that's what your website should help them with. So in order to do that, you have to know who your audience is, who's your target, who are the people that you would like to work with. And then you have to do a little bit of research to understand what they need, how they buy, and what kind of questions they might have. And you want to be able to be a resource and answer all of that for them, or at least some of that for them on your website. You don't want your website to just scream me, 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 that's not helpful for the visitor. If I'm coming to your website, it's probably because I have a problem or because I have a question or I want to know something about my business. I wanna know how I can do better. And so making sure you know who your audience is and kind of what they might need is very, very important, really in all of our marketing, but definitely for the website. And it is a big thing that people miss because they're focused on wanting to tell everybody what they do versus how they help, how they solve problems. Those are the type of things you want to think about when you're creating your website. <clears throat> the third one is using the wrong type of content. Um, this goes a little bit hand in hand with knowing who your audience is. If you know your audience, you'll know what type of content resonates with them. You'll know if your audience prefers video versus written content. You'll know if they might prefer graphics and infographics and things like that, like what helps them make a decision to want to work with you. And so you've got to do, again, a little bit of digging and research to get to know your audience. You want to make sure you're delivering high quality content. Um, back to what I said before, your website is a first impression. So imagine if you go to someone's website and you see a poor quality photo or you see a poor quality video, what kind of impression to you. They certainly don't say to yourself, hey, I want to give this person money. I want to work with them, right? 
So you want to make sure that everything that a person sees on your site is positive and very high quality. Use multiple types of content if you're not sure which resonates with your audience. So for example, some people don't read, period. Video is important for them. So if you only have articles on your site, if you have a lot of text on each page, you could turn off people that could possibly be clients for you. And so you wanna make sure to vary the type of content as well if you don't know exactly what um, might resonate. And then answering questions, that's a really important one. Again, it goes back to knowing your audience, but let's just say you're you know, a plumber, for example. Um, if somebody comes to your website, people aren't just hanging out perusing plumbing sites. It probably means they have a problem and they need something. So are you sharing with them how you can fix something, how you can help them quickly, like right on the homepage, making sure they get that information very, very quickly. They know how to contact you, things like that. So using the wrong kind of content is a big mistake that people make. And that's something that you really need to think through as you're either creating a new site or you're revising or refreshing a current site. Number four, this is uh, shocking to a lot of people, but not understanding how little time people spend on your website. The average, and if you're very, very lucky, would be like two minutes. That is not very long. And that is not two minutes per page, that's two minutes on your entire website. And that helps you think about, well, maybe I have too many pages, maybe I have too much information. If someone is only spending two minutes, and again, that's if you're lucky. Most of us, it's less than a minute. And so how do you get the most important information upfront and first in a very quick, easy to read way so that people understand how you can help them? A lot of times, again, people think that the website is about them. So they're wanting to, to fill every page with all of this information about the great work that they do. But the reality is people are not going to see that. So what is it that you want them to see? What is it that you want to show them? And you're going to have to figure out a way to be very concise with that information. People do not spend a lot of time on websites. You can work through your content by trying to give them a reason to stay. So again, back to video. Video is a great way to do that. If you had a 30 second video or 45 second video on your site and it's good, then somebody's gonna watch, they might not watch the whole thing, but they might watch half of it. And then that might compel them to go look around a little bit more because you had something so interesting on that, on that front page. And then give them a reason to come back. So if you have a website and your information is just static, there's no real reason for someone to come back and visit. So make sure that you're changing your content, you're refreshing your content. Blogging is really good for that. So if people know that every week or every two weeks there will be something new, that might give them a reason to come back. But you have to put some effort into this one because again, people don't stay on a website very long unless you give them a compelling reason to do that. The next one is having too many pages. And you probably guessed this based on the fact that people don't stay on a site too long. So don't waste your time, don't waste your money on creating a website that has a lot of pages that people actually aren't going to see. And so keep things simple, especially for us as small business owners, keep it simple, um, keep it fresh, like I mentioned, making sure you have new content that's coming out there and then focus on your most valuable content only. And value means value to the audience. So what are they, again, what are they looking for? What questions do they have? And how can you create content that's valuable to them? Um, don't have, for example, I hate going to websites and I see like a blog from 2016. Like what is that doing there? If it's not relevant, get rid of it. Don't have things on your site and make your site kind of bloated in a way because not only are people not going to see it, but they might see certain options that confuse them. And you know, it's not telling the story that you, that you want to. So keep it very simple. Make sure the content you have out there is only the most valuable and then keep it fresh, but you don't need a lot of pages on your site to, to do what the site needs to do, which is to help your potential clients and get them to contact you. The next mistake is not having CTAs throughout. So CTAs are calls to action. That is really, really important because let's say you're able to get people to come to your site, they <coughs> enjoy the content, they're on your site for a little bit, what do you want them to do next? If they don't have anything to do, you're not telling them what to do. They're, they're just going to leave. And so you want to make sure that you're giving a clear call to action. That could be something like sign up for my newsletter or join this webinar that I'm going to be hosting in a week. 
um, book a call with me, those type of action oriented things, but you have to tell them what you want them to do. So think of your website as kind of like a roadmap where you want to define the users or the visitor's journey. You might want them to start on the homepage, then you want them to go here next, et cetera, et cetera. Tell them where to go and tell them what you want them to do and then tell them again. And so a lot of times like really well put together sites, you might see a call to action button at the top of the page, but then if the person makes it to the bottom, there's another button that says the same thing. So it's just a reminder that here's something I want you to do and you just keep on reminding them to that. But CTAs are very, very important because again, a person is coming to your website to get help for something or to find out something. So you need to tell, you need to direct them and then tell them what you want them to do. Number seven of the mistakes is not getting feedback. This is a big one. I mean, I think all of them are important, but this is a big one too, where a lot of times as small business owners, we create the site or have the site created, but it's really just from our perspective. And we don't actually take time after it's created to get some feedback. The best people to give you feedback would be your customers and your employees. Your customers, because for whatever the reason is, and you should find that out, they came to you, they trust you, they're paying you money. Those are, those are the best people to get feedback from. They like you, they like working with you and they'll tell you what's missing or they'll tell you what's too much. And so they are really great. And it also gives you another opportunity to touch base. Hey, I'm just, if you have five minutes, I'd love for you to check out our new site and, and give us some feedback. So it's a great way to you know, keep a conversation going with the customer, but also people usually like to critique things. And so if you go to a client and say, hey, I would love some feedback, no matter what it is, I'd love to hear it. They'll do it for you. Your employees are the same way. A lot of times, all of your employees might not have been involved in the website creation. So some of those employees are the ones that are talking to the client. So they're going to know what questions people are asking and things like that. And they can give you that feedback on some of your content. And then the last thing are your analytics. Google Analytics is a free tool that everybody should use. But that's going to tell you where people are going on your site, how long they're staying on your site. So it's going to give you that metric-based feedback. Um, the customers and employees will give you that subjective feedback from their point of view, but the analytics will give you the metric kind of fact-based feedback. How long are people staying on each page? Where are they coming from? How are they finding you? Things like that. And so getting the feedback is one thing to do, but then using it. So getting that feedback to tell you that, no one goes to you know the third page or something like that. We'll get rid of it. Um, if you find that people are staying on a certain page longer, we'll make sure your CTAs are really clear. They must like the content that's there. So the analytics will really help you kind of refine your site. This, the next one is about performance of your website. So this is again, a little bit similar to the analytics, making sure that you know, a website is not kind of set it and forget it. Just do the site and then go on about your business. You want to make sure that your website is like a living kind of breathing asset for your, for your marketing. And so focusing on the metrics, again, Google Analytics is a great tool, um, is a free tool, and it's going to help you make database decisions. One thing that I usually tell people because Google Analytics can be very confusing if you're not used to it. But this is an area where get a freelancer to build you reports. It should cost less than like, I mean, you could use something like Fiverr, something very low cost to build you some standard reports and you can have them emailed to you every week just so you know what's happening with your website. There are like six to 10 things where if you track those on a week by week basis, it will really help you make decisions about your traffic, about your audience and things like that. And so I really, really recommend that people don't overlook how important it is to know about the performance of your site. The next one is waiting too long to ask for help. And so a lot of times, you know, one thing I was thinking about um, Squarespace and Wix, you see commercials, like there was a Super Bowl commercial for Squarespace, if I'm not mistaken. They spend a lot of money on marketing. The, the tools that are like that, that are kind of like your self-sufficient DIY things, they're not for everybody. You know, they make it seem like it's easy. Anybody could just go build a site, but that's not always the case. You still need to understand the structure and things like that. If you're able to do the website yourself, that's great. There's plenty of information online, plenty of free information to help you do that. But you do have to consider the opportunity cost. I've talked to a lot of people who might say, oh, I've been working on my site for a year. 
okay, it should not take a year to like come up with a really good site. So what are you missing? What are you not doing during that time if you're spending time on a website? So think about how important the website is to your business and then think about how much, how valuable your time is. And that'll help you decide whether you should try to do it on your own or whether you should just invest a little bit and have somebody else do it that you know is an expert and does it all the time. There's nothing wrong with creating it yourself, but that is not necessarily for everyone. And you don't have to, like the cost of the website should not prohibit you from having a vendor do it. So just think about that. And if you do decide to get help, don't wait a year, don't wait so long. Just go ahead and try to evaluate and see, you know what, I need to get some extra assistance on this. And then the last thing is, if you get help, don't break the bank. Websites should not be super expensive, particularly for a small business. Um, with WordPress, we do a lot of WordPress sites, but it's the same for Squarespace and Wix. There are a lot of templates out there. Most people, um, we work with a mix. Some, some of our clients get custom design sites that cost a little bit more, but there are some really great templates where you don't have to customize anything except for your branding colors. Um, there are a lot of really great templates and there are a lot of ways you can take those templates and make them look like they're not templates. Like if you have someone good that's doing that so you don't feel like, oh, well, my site looks just like someone else's. The key here, if you are looking to work with a vendor, know your budget. You know, one of the things that I get asked a lot is, well, how much does a website cost? Well, it could cost you $500. It could cost you $30,000. Like, you know, it just depends. <laughs> and that's a pretty big range. You need to think about how much you have to invest. If you only have $500, then it's more of what can I get for $500? If you only have $1,000, what can I get for this? And work that way instead of asking that kind of open-ended question, because then a lot of people might add things that you don't really need. And so you want to make sure you know your budget, but also make sure you're starting small and keeping it simple. Again, your website is for you to make a good first impression. You don't necessarily need a lot of bells and whistles initially. And then the great thing about a website is it can grow as your business grows. So as you start to bring in more revenue, then add something you know interesting or something fun or interactive to your site. But don't feel like you have to do everything right away. Last thing I have, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, your website is a living, breathing thing. It's a living, breathing marketing asset for your business. And so it's going to be with you throughout the life of your business. You don't have to do everything right this minute or in the next two months that you want for your site. Let it grow with you. And that's going to help on your budget to start small. If you get a new client, maybe there's something new you want to add. If you reach your quarterly goals, maybe there's something new you want to add. But there's no rush, plus technology changes so much. That's the other thing. If you spend a lot of money initially on your site, it'll be outdated in like a year. And so you might just want to start small and then grow as your business grows. And then you can change as technology changes as well. Then the last thing I wanted to share, I love this quote. Um, this is from a gentleman who's a speaker and an author. But it says designing a website can be a bit like being a kid inheriting a sweet shop. It's easy to get carried away. There are so many choices. A website can be like an attic that never fills up. Space is not the problem. Attention is. And this could not be truer. There are so many things. And this really, to me, is representative of all marketing. There are so many things that you can do. There's so much money that you can spend slash waste if you're not careful. And so the key is being very focused, being very deliberate in any decision that you make. You can think about some of the mistakes I've shared with you and think about what is important for your audience, but try not to feel like you have to have everything that everybody else has on your site. Try not to overdo it. A simple, clean, professional site that has valuable content is all you need, and that should not cost you a lot of money to do, okay? And Amy. then ask some questions, okay. if we have any questions. Amy, thank you. This was so informative and I'm learning lots of tips and notes. You mentioned some tools to use for mm -hmm. websites. What are some of your favorites that you like to, to measure, to get ideas or things like that? Yeah, so we use Google Analytics a lot. Um, again, that's a free tool and it is pretty powerful. So we have um, Data Studio is a reporting tool. It's also free and it's also Google that kind of sits on top of analytics. So analytics is 
a lot of information, but you could get, you could lose your mind <laughs> trying to go in there. What Data Studio does, it allows you to put um, a really nice looking clean dashboard. We do this a lot for clients too, on top of it. But some of the things that you want to track, you, you want to know where people are coming from. For example, let's say you're doing a lot of social media promotion. Well, are people going to your website from Facebook or from Instagram? And that'll help you know if your social media is working. Um, if you do an event, you can set up tracking just for a specific event. So you can see, well, how many people attended this webinar and then went to the website. So it's really helpful to know how other things that you might be doing marketing wise are leading people to, to your site. It also gives you basic things like which pages are the most popular, how long people are staying on the pages, things like that, again, that can help you make some decisions about your website. But that would be the one that, to my knowledge, there's not much else that's free. You might find things that are low cost, but that's one that's very powerful and free. How much, like for the novice user that's just mm -hmm. getting on um, Google Analytics and just kind of starting to look in, like, what do you recommend for a business? I mean, obviously you said you can get lost in the myriad yeah. of it. Like how much time should you really spend in there? And what should you focus on when you're looking at analytics? My initial um, answer would be don't spend time at all. I would say go to Fiverr, hire you someone to do a nice dashboard for you and let them do the work. And you as the business owner say, here are the five things I'd really like to know about my website. And then let them build that for you. Because if you're a novice um, for websites, it, analytics can be overwhelming. I mean, it, even just to find the number of visits, it will take you a minute to even find where that is. And that tends to frustrate people and then they leave and then they don't come back. So actually what I would recommend is find someone very low cost. It should be like under $100 for you to have somebody go into your analytics and create a really nice dashboard for you. And then just look at that. And then from that information, you'll be able to make really good decisions. So um, Facebook Pixel, like mm -hmm. a lot of people, that's the new thing right now is, um, well, I shouldn't say new, it's been around for a mm -hmm. little while, but how do you recommend businesses use it? Should they integrate it? Where should they integrate it? How should they integrate it? Do they, do they call professional? What are your thoughts on Facebook Pixel? Yeah. Um, it's actually not a very difficult thing to do, but you can, if not done correctly, screw up your site. So it's like high risk, but not that hard. But the Pixel is really just a tracking device so that you can see it's one of those um, things that might be a little scary to some people. You know, if somebody gets to you from Facebook, you're actually able to track the rest of their activity after they leave your site. So you could see, for example, well, where do they go after they leave? Are they going to a competitor site to check that out? You know, what are, what are they doing? So it's, it's um, really just adding, like Facebook will give you the code and then you're just adding that to your website. So it's a very simple process, but if you're not familiar with adding code to your website, you may wanna get someone to help you with that. It is something that is very helpful though. And then of course, once you have that added, then you can, you can see that in your analytics to be able to track like what's happening. What do you think about Google ads? Like mm. should, should businesses be paying for them? I know a lot of us get a postcard every few months mm -hmm. for a free credit to get started. What are your thoughts on that and other yeah. paid ads to get people to traffic to your website? Yeah, I think it depends on the type of business you have. So as an example, um, let's say you are a um, B2C business. So you're maybe you're a hairstylist, you're a plumber, you're things like that, where it's actually quite competitive and people may not, you know, find you other ways. I think that's when Google ads are really good because you need to be on that first page. You need for people to see you and then you can build a relationship. Services, I think it depends on the type it is, but if you have something really specialized, it may not be the best thing. So it does depend on, um, the type of business, but in all honesty, it's expensive. And so if you are watching your money, I would, I would never recommend that being like one of the first things. I would try to do some organic things first before you spent money doing that. Um, I just had this conversation on Monday with a gentleman who's like, I got a $500 credit. And I'm like, yeah, 
And that's not going to do anything for your business. You're going to have to spend so much more than that. So they entice you with giving you some stuff for free, but then you get in there and you might see some benefit and then you end up paying more money and it just becomes this cycle. So I'm not a huge, huge fan unless you have a, a decent budget. It doesn't have to be a ridiculous budget, but a um, thousand, I would probably say a thousand dollars a month in ads would probably be a bare minimum um, to get you some movement. And even that might take a little bit of time, but ads are, you know, unfortunately you have to think a little bit about their, you know, Google ads, they're out to make money. They're not like first and foremost out to help you, they're out to make money. And so I'd be pretty cautious about putting a lot of money into that unless you just have it to burn. I would look at other ways, um, thought leadership, blogging, your social media, other ways to get people to come to your site first um, before I would try that. And then get help. That's the other thing. We find a lot of people who try to do the ads themselves. It Again, it's an investment. So if you're going to spend the money, spend the money to get a partner to help you because it's not something that a brand new person usually will have a lot of success in and you'll end up spending months trying to figure out the best thing. There's a lot of testing involved with creating your ads and you know there's just a lot of testing involved. So it takes a little bit of time before you get it right. So I would definitely recommend if you're going to do it, get a get a partner to help you. What do you think about social media ads? Like that when they ask you if you want more likes to your page or more followers or more clicks yeah. to your website, do those prove to work usually or is it worth an investment to drive people to your website? Um, so the favorite marketing answer is always it depends, but I think that that can work. But again, it depends on what your goal is. So if, for example, if your goal is to simply have more followers, that would absolutely work. But you might not have any engagement because it's so easy to follow someone. It's a click of a button. But that doesn't mean they like your business. That doesn't mean they like your product. That doesn't mean they're going to interact with you. So it kind of depends on what your goal is. Again, if you just want that number, because that in some cases helps you to maybe win business. So if you just need that number, it's a, actually a pretty low cost way to get followers. Facebook is really good for that and Instagram really good for that. But if you're looking to really grow a community and you want that engagement, that's probably not always the best thing because again, people follow you and then they, they don't really take the time to unfollow you if they're not participating, they just don't go to your page. And so what you don't want is a huge number of followers and like no engagement. To me, that looks worse than a smaller number of followers, but you have heavy engagement. That means people really are interested in, in what you're putting out. Awesome. Well, Amy, I know you've covered a ton of things for us today mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've gotten some really good questions and some feedback from some people. What, if people have more questions or want to connect, what's the best way to reach out and find you? Yeah, I actually included, um, hopefully you'll share this slide with them. So I did include my information here. Um, you can, you know, I really enjoy talking to businesses because a lot of times you, you might just have one question that I could answer for you or someone could answer for you that puts you on the right track for success. So I always encourage people, my calendar link is here, schedule 15 minutes and just ask, there's no charge for that, but it's a way, you know, I've had people help me in growing my business and it's a way I can give back and help other people as well. But you can also take a look at our website and see um, what we offer. We have a contact page there that you can get in touch. But I usually just encourage people just set up a few minutes with me and let's talk about um, from websites. We do a lot of them. So I can usually go to someone's website in five minutes and give you a couple of things that you could change that would help. Um, and I can usually answer questions pretty quickly as well. So 15 minutes is usually enough time to help to help someone. And I guess the last thing from that $15,000 investment you did years ago on your website, was it worth it? Did you, did, have you gotten out of it what you needed and grown from there? You know, the interesting thing. So initially I would be like, heck no, it wasn't worth it. But now we do websites. So <laughs> we've made the money back. I mean, I would say, you know, the biggest lesson from that for me was I don't ever want someone to feel like they paid me money and they got no value. And I felt like I got no value. So I felt like I got taken advantage of. And that is actually the reason why we started doing websites. I was like, this can't happen to other people. And it's not that difficult to do. <laughs> and so it's like, well, we're going to just start doing this and treat people fairly and give them more value for the money that they're spending. And so in retrospect, it was a great lesson. It was an expensive lesson, but a great lesson. And now we have a really cool part of our business where that's all we do is, is help people with their websites. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Um, we will obviously share this on, it'll be on social media. It'll okay. just live forever on YouTube. And so if you have any questions, comments, or need some feedback, feel free to contact Amy with Creative Allies. Um, she's got her email there, her website, or her, her both her websites, or you mm -hmm. can schedule some time with her for a 15-minute consult. Amy, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you guys next month on the third Tuesday of the month for Tech Tuesday.